Hey everybody. Well, we've got a new project this week. My uncle was uh, kind enough to drop this, uh, I guess it's a trailer, the, the remnants of a trailer. He dropped it off yesterday. Uh, he knows that I need something to carry around my 1,000 liter water tank. And well, this should fit the bill. It's a little bit rough, but you know, it's within tolerance. The beautiful thing about it is it has the exact same patina as the tractor. So it's gonna fit right in. I'm not quite sure what the point of this thing was, and I'll probably never know to be honest with you, but it's got a lot of weird stuff on it. And it's, you know, a little haggard. Looks like it's been fabricated off the front end of a God only knows what. I don't know, Model T. Whatever became before a Model T. Not much suspension, but we don't really need that. Because we've got these wonderful tires. Or at least we will have wonderful tires. We'll have to do some modifications here, but I think it'll uh, it'll serve its purpose perfectly with a little bit of love. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this probably isn't metric. Might not even be standard. Might have to beat on it with some stones. Yeah, it looks kind of three quarter like, so. So what do we got here? 15 inch, 15 inch. And on this side, we've got fourteen inch. Yeah, that's close. It's only an inch off, right? Polyester. All that. All right. Let's see these ones. Are Well, on the positive side of things, they all came out. It's about as positive as I can get on this. Yeah, it's looking kind of rough, but we'll deal with it. I dropped the wheels off at the uh, local tire shop. They're going to take a look around and see if they can find something used for me. It'll probably take them a few days or a week, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be worth the wait. The tires don't need to be uh, highway ready or anything like that. They're just going to be used on this wagon to uh, basically go between the pond and my garden, you know, a couple hundred yards over the lawn. So as long as they have tread and kind of hold air, that's all I really need. Just before I tore the sawmill down, I cut up these cross members so that I can set the track up on something a little bit more stable. Out on the lawn, they were just kind of floating on the grass and uh, it, the whole sawmill kind of moved around with time so I want to add something with a little bit of uh, weight and that will probably you know hold it in place. I mistakenly left my auto leveling laser in Grenada so I had to pick up another one here. The one I have in Grenada is green and this one's red. They're really quite handy, but they're not particularly bright when you're outside, so they're only good for a fairly short distance. But uh, they shoot out a nice uh, horizontal and vertical level line, and it should be very helpful for getting these things set up right, and uh, hopefully fairly quickly. This is the first time that I've actually tore down and reset up the OS 18. Just for fun, I actually did time the whole thing. And from the moment I started taking bolts apart out in the lawn till this moment right here was 38 minutes. 
So maybe add two minutes because you have to put the little stops back on at the end. About 40 minutes to completely tear it down and set it up level on these cross members that I have. This is a freshly cut locust log. Uh, it came right off my mother's property. It was hanging over the driveway and dropping all kinds of branches and stuff. So we decided to take it out. I'm told that it's a uh, very good wood for outdoor use. It uh, doesn't rot very easily. So I'm going to use it to make the boards for my trailer. I think this is a pretty good sized log. So what I'm gonna do, rather than try to cut to a particular size to fit onto the trailer, I'm just gonna square off the log to the biggest cant that I can kind of work with. And then I'm gonna let the log tell me how big a board I can make to fit onto the trailer. I, I did a kind of a guess based on how straight the log was that I should be able to get something an inch and a half thick maybe a little bit more by four, four and a quarter inch wide. So uh, that's my guess and there's, there's more than enough log there to, uh, to get the job done. So let's see how close I get. those of you that don't know, I'm really, really new to this whole sawmill thing. And this is actually my, my first attempt at making a square cant, which uh, is quite the challenge actually. So uh, I, I guess I have to do a little bit of work setting up the uh, machine, the little stops to get a, uh, a better right angle there. But uh, I've checked everything as I've gone and uh, I'm pretty happy that it, uh, it looks about right. To properly cover the trailer, I'm going to need 14 pieces uh, about 44 inches long. These, uh, these are a little bit over 8 feet but not quite 9, so they'll definitely be uh, long enough to get two lengths out of. And it looks like I'm going to, in total, get 10 boards that are 1 and 3 quarter inches thick and 4 and a half inches wide, which is awesome. So the extra pieces, I actually have another project in mind for them. So I'm going to set them on my drying pile in my shipping container and get to them later. The tire shop really came through with two fairly decent pieces of rubber. They'll probably last me for the rest of time, so I'm quite happy with that. 
The old lumber on the trailer is kind of halfway rotten, but it's still got a little bit of strength to it. Steel fasteners certainly have a lot of strength left in them, so I'm just going to cut them out where possible or where needed, and hopefully some of them will pull through and uh, I won't have to cut them again. Most of the bolts have firmly rusted themselves into the angle iron frame and I had to use a cutoff wheel to get them down flush. Then I, I cleaned the top of all the angle iron with uh, one of these little flapper wheels and that, that's good enough. I'm just going to bolt the wood straight to it. I'm probably going to have to drill all new holes but that shouldn't take too long. I don't know much about the locust tree. Um, apparently there's a black locust and a honey locust. I have no idea which one this is, but I have to say that the color of the wood is, is really nice, really uh, Douglas fir looking, and uh, it's really easy to work with. Very dense. It's gonna be a very hard, uh, it's gonna be a very hard surface for this trailer, that's for sure. Especially an inch and three quarters thick. I'm sure this is going to turn gray, you know, over the next year or so, but right now it's a, it's just a really pretty wood. I do have a few pieces set aside in my uh, drying room, plus I have at least one or two more logs, plus I have another tree standing that probably has to come down. So my brother has a small wood shop and uh, I'll, I'll dry some of this up and give it to him and I don't know, he can make uh, small boxes or something out of it and I, I want to see how it finishes up because I'll bet you it looks pretty nice. tank fits on perfectly. I'm going to have to put some little cleats around the bottom so it doesn't slide around, but for right now I, uh, I'm just going to use this uh, thick strap until I find out just exactly where the balance point is so that uh, I can take it off the tractor and it doesn't you know, flip backwards or, uh, or drive down into the ground. That open area in front of the tank uh, towards the tongue is actually going to be a really handy spot. I water my garden with a 12-volt uh, bilge pump and a marine battery, so I need a little bit of room. Plus, I use that same pump and battery with a hose to fill this thing at the pond. You know, it's, it's nice to have a spot where I can set all this stuff down. Maybe I'll make it a little enclosure so it doesn't get wet when it rains. But for now, it works, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already.